are about to hear a romantic drama, Two Diamond Bracelets, from Love Story magazine, featuring the love story girl in the role of Catherine Conyer. The scene is the Café Roots, most popular of society nightclubs. Outside, the street is rain-swept, but inside is a different mood. The golden glow of subdued lights, the soft seduction of Russian music. At a corner table sits the lovely Catherine Conyers, the most photographed girl in the world, and another young woman, basking in the reflected glory of Catherine's popularity. Their escorts have excused themselves for the moment. Catherine, too bored even to light her cigarette, rests both listless arms on the snowy tablecloth. On her slender wrists lays the famous Conyers diamond bracelets. Katie Conyers, I, I don't know how you can sit there so calmly. I'd, I'd be scared to death. Scared? For goodness sake, what of? Imagine actually wearing the Conyers diamonds out oh. in the open like that. A king's ransom on each arm. It's it's foolhardy. It's, it's reckless. It's just asking for trouble. Oh, nonsense, Bunny. You've been reading too many high-powered detective stories, that's all. Yes, well, if you think jewel thieves exist only in detective stories, Katie, you're crazy. <laughs> You'll be lucky if you don't wake up some cold, gray morning in some dark alley with your head bashed in. Sounds terribly unbecoming. Oh, relax, Bunny. I never go anywhere at night except in the family's car, and winter's been driving me ever since I went to the kindergarten. What's more, I've worn this, this junk ever since I came out two years ago and never lost a single sparkler. Well... Now, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to me. Nothing ever does, worse luck. I like that. Here you are, the most popular girl in town, engaged to Roger Hastings, the most eligible bachelor in the swim, well, and you... Well, not entirely engaged. I haven't said yes yet. Oh, but you will. Everyone knows you will. <laughs> You'll have the biggest and smartest wedding of the season, and... Then live happily ever after. And you say nothing ever happens to you. That's just it. Everything's too doggone perfect. No excitement, no zip, no no real emotion. You know what, Bunny? No, what? I'm going home. Tell Roger you... I'll see him for lunch tomorrow. Oh, yes, but Katie, what'll he say? I don't care. But you can't walk out on him like this. Can't I? Just watch me. Katie! <laughs> Shall I call your car, Miss Conyers? Yes, please. Now, if you'll just stand under the awning, miss. It's raining cats and dogs. Goodness, it is pouring. Where's the Noah's flood? And speaking of that, there's the old family ark driving up now. Uh, I do wish Father could persuade Winters to let us have a new car. That's what comes of having old family retainers. You can't even call your car your own. Yes, miss. This way, miss. Mind the puddles. Thank you. Good night, miss. Good night. Oh, goodness, what a night. I'm dog tired. You can take me home, Winters. And Winters, I know you know Barney Oldfield, but don't dawdle any more than you can help or I'll be asleep before you get halfway there. Oh, oh goodness. Mm, I must have dozed off. Oh, raining harder than ever, I can't see a thing. Aren't we nearly there, Winters? Yes, miss. Oh! We get it. Winters, the road is so slippery. Do you have to go so fast? Yes, miss. Winters, you took that turn on two wheels. Now, this is where we turn in, but miss. That wasn't our gatehouse. No, miss. Winters, have you been drinking? No, miss. Well, here's where you get out, miss. Where till I turn on the light? I, I, you're not Winters. Right. Go to the head of the class. What do you mean by bringing me out here in the middle of the night? You take me right back. I'm sorry, but this is where we spend the night. Oh, so this is kidnapping. You think you'll get a nice fat ransom, I suppose. Well, let me tell you, tomorrow morning the police will be scouring every inch of the state. You haven't a Chinaman's chance of kidnapping me. My father is a very influential man. I'm not particularly interested in your father. I'm not interested in you. What I want are the Conyers bracelets. Hand them over. Oh. 
If that's what you wanted, why didn't you take them a half an hour ago when I was sleeping? I thought it would be more considerate to let you give them to me yourself. Oh, then you, you're not an ordinary gangster. Far from it, I promise you. Mm, a gentleman raffles. How fascinating. I've always wanted to meet one. Well, you've got your wish. Now, suppose you hand over the diamonds. And suppose I refuse? I'll have to come after them. You wouldn't dare. No? Well, don't say I didn't warn you. I'll scream. Go ahead. (coughs) Pretty good. Pity there's no one to hear you. Don't you touch me. Don't you. Here, here, here. Hold on a minute. Let's get this straight. I have no intention of hurting you. If I get the diamonds. That's very noble, I'm sure. Never mind the badinage. Just hand over the bracelets. All right. I must. There. Now, will you take me home? No, not tonight. You see that cottage there? It's the guest house on one of the big North Shore estates that happens to be closed up this season. I borrowed it for the night. That's where you sleep. It's really very cozy. I attended to everything, even to making sure that you'd have hot water for your bath. Please, I'd rather go home. I'm sorry to be disobliging, but that doesn't fit in with my plans. Tomorrow, I'll drive you partway back to town. Then I'll say goodbye and leave you with a couple of flat tires on a road that's not too deserted. I think you can manage the rest yourself. Yes, but tonight, I I can't stay here alone with... Well, I mean, you wouldn't... Oh, certainly not. You couldn't be safer if you were cross-eyed, spavin, knock-kneed, and had lost all your teeth. I'm not interested in anything but diamonds. No, that's not very flattering. Can't help it. Come on, it's late. We've got to get some sleep. Come on, the rain stopped. Oh, the other ground's so muddy, I'll ruin my slippers. Sorry, I've no cloak, so I can't do a Sir Walter Raleigh. No, but you might carry me. Well, you don't seem to be so terrified of me after all. Well, perhaps I'm convinced you're a gentleman first and a crook afterwards. Pretty good judge of character, aren't oh, you? I have to be. A girl in my position has every fortune hunter in the country on a trail from the time she's out of a cradle. Well, your fortune is perfectly safe for me. I prefer to earn my own money. By borrowing other people's cottages and diamonds. That's one way. Uh-huh. Now, come on, we're wasting time. Hold on tight. Here right. we go. <clears throat> there we are. Wait till I unlock the door for you. The light switch is on the right-hand side of the door. You'll find the bed and the bedroom all made up. Thanks. And here's the key. Good night. Oh, I mean, wait a minute. Yes? What about you? Where are you going to spend the night? In the car. But won't that be horribly uncomfortable? Probably, but I have to think of my reputation. I must say, Kitty, you gave us a nice scare getting yourself kidnapped by a cutthroat like that. Oh, but, Father, I keep telling you he wasn't half bad. Yeah. There were linen sheets and bath salts and plenty of hot water. So I wasn't a bit uncomfortable. Uncomfortable be blows. I'll have his description in every newspaper in the country. Thinks he can run away with my diamonds, now does he? look here, Father. Which were you really worried about, me or the diamonds? Well, you, of course, uh, but you're safely back. Now I'm going to tell the newspaper. Oh, no, you aren't. Think what it would do to my reputation. Heiress spends night with modern highwaymen. Not that it wasn't perfectly moral, but who would believe it? Well, uh, maybe there is something in that. Oh, but hang it all, Katie. Uh, those diamonds weren't insured. Is that my fault? The Brewster Insurance Company has been after you for years to insure your valuables. Oh, Dan Brewster's a fool. Oh, whose diamonds are missing? Beg pardon, sir. Yes, Jenkins. A package has just arrived, sir, by the last post. Well, well, let me have it. Yes, sir. Let's see. Oh, it rattles. I wonder... Oh, oh, of course it couldn't be. It is. Father, he sent them back. Who? Uh, what? My young man. He sent back the diamonds. Oh, that was nice of him. The scoundrel. I'd like to lay my hands on him. Oh, I almost forgot, sir. Now what? That young man is here again. The one that's been trying to sell you the insurance. Mr. Stephen Brewster. Old Dan's boy. Well, uh, why didn't you say so? Uh, smart fellow. Uh, show him in. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Katie, I, I want you to meet this boy. He's worth two at that namby-pamby fashion plate you want to marry. <laughs> but I've changed my mind, Father. Didn't I tell you? I'm not going to marry Roger. Well, uh, that's something. Uh, Katie, 
Uh, you entertain Dan's boy until I get my fountain pen. <laughs> I think I'll sign that insurance policy he's been trying to sell me. All right, Father, but hurry back. Uh, nice young men bore me after last night. Mr. Stephen Brewster, miss. Oh, you. Hello. How's the kidnapped heiress? Oh, how... How dare you come here pretending to be the son of my father's best friend? But I am the son of your father's best friend. I take it the bracelets got back all right. Yes, that, well, that is, I, I still don't understand why you went to all the trouble to take them. Oh, it's you... really quite simple. Your what? father's one of our toughest customers. My father said he'd give me a partnership in the business if I could persuade your father to insure his valuables. And is a partnership a good thing to have? It brings in enough for me to marry on. Oh, and you, you were thinking of getting married? Well, I wasn't until last night. Well, that's something I want to talk to you about. Couldn't we go out in the garden? Why, yes, that is. Well, right. here I am, Stephen, pen in hand, ready to sign that doggone policy. I'm sorry, sir, but that will have to wait. Huh? I have a more important proposition I want to discuss with your daughter. Look out for him, Katie. His sales talk is terrific. I shouldn't be at all surprised. All I hope is your sales resistance isn't as strong as your father's. It's taken me six months to break him down, and I hate to waste time. You have been listening to a romance featuring the love story girl and presented with the permission of Street and Smith, publishers of Love Story magazine. Listen for the love story girl in a new romance next week.